Do you ever wonder how to create parametric stairs in Blender? With modifiers, it's possible to do a completely parametric and modifiable stair at any point in the process. For example, these stairs here can be adjusted in multiple of ways. We can change the count, we can change the top connector, we can change the bottom connector, we can change the second landing, we can adjust the width or get rid of it completely, we can adjust the bevel, so all of these have the right number of bevel, the thickness of the steps, and finally, the depth of our landing. That starts with something very simple. It starts with this kind of cross section here. So let's walk you step by step of how to develop this. So it's always good to start with some reference images, which we can look at and to understand how they're formed. I went on Pinterest and found these references for stairs. And there's two of them, two kinds, and they both have something in common. They've got a start section, then there's a radius that seems to stay pretty constant in all directions. Then we have a straight path, another radius that's constant, and then the end item here. This is the same stair, so you can see the exact same thing here. We've got the radius, straight path, straight path and a bit of a gap between them to accent the fact that they're separate elements. And this is another stair that I quite like where we can see how the bottom elements, they come to a point and the in-between element between the first flight of stairs and the second flight of stairs is angled. The angle also varies a little bit and it kind of intermediates quite nicely between these two sides here. So that's the stair that I used as a reference to start to develop ours. Perhaps the stair that we're creating is going to go completely to the bottom. So all of these landings, they go all the way to the bottom and the same happens on the top. So that's what we're going to come up with now. So let's start it with a new file. I always have a person in my file and a default plane instead of a cube. I'm going to go in the plane, right click, go into edit mode, select everything in vertex mode, press M to merge at center. So now we just have one vertex. Select the vertex, extrude E Z 0.5 meters, extrude along the X axis. So E X one meter, extrude along the Z, E, Z two meters, extrude along the X again, E, X one meter. This part here represents the second section of the stair after the intermediate landing, and then E, Z 0.5. So that's our base cross section. If we want to, we can add an angle to it. So let's move these 1.5 meter away from each other. So we have a gap and a very interesting transition between the length of these sections. Next, let's go to the modifier tab, add modifier, array, uncheck relative, check constant and expand. And we're going to type 0.3 and 0.18 meters. I'm noticing a mistake. So this should be zero and the Y should be 0.3. So where do these numbers come from? These are the standard step sizes. A step is usually 270 millimeters wide. That's typically the smallest it can be. And the height of a riser, of step riser is 180 millimeters. In the US it's seven by 11 inches. Everywhere else, it's roughly about 300 by 180 millimeters. So that's the correct offset between these two. So now we can increase the array count to see the numbers that we have. So that's the starting point. And as you can see here, it works fine, but here we have to adjust it. None of the bottom or the tops are hitting something that's concrete. It's a fairly simple array at the moment. To represent this a little bit better, Let's add a screw modifier, change the angle to zero and the screw amount to 0.25 along the Y axis and steps in the viewport, we can change those numbers to one. So now we can see a little bit of depth of these items. Next, we can add the bevel modifier just to see how the bevel is starting to work. 0.1 meter is fine and we can change the number of segments to something like six. The more we have, the smoother it is, the, but the more geometry we have, which in this case, our geometry is not that much. so it's fairly okay to have a little bit more. So we get something that looks very smooth. And if we go into a wire mode, you can see the number of edges that we've got. So that's the basis. We pretty much have it all. And now we have to figure out how to make the bottoms reach the ground plane, the tops reach in the ground plane and flipping this item here to adding a landing. To do that, we're going to use some vertex groups. So let's go to the object data properties and let's create a few groups here. One we're going to have bottom let's add another one that's calling top another one that's called second flight and another one which is called landing so now if we go back into edit mode you see that we still have just our vertices and we can change all of this geometry fairly easily which is great because all of our fillets 
all of our radiuses they're staying as they are so at any point the angle we can change the rotation and everything adjusts itself so now let's get started with these vertex groups here the first thing we want to do is add this bottom vertex to this vertex group called bottom so let's press assign with that selected that's good next thing we want to select just the top make sure the bottom one is deselected top assign next let's select the second flight so these two vertices here assign them to second flight and what we'll do now is select everything and we will assign this to landing and you'll see that for later so now that we have everything assigned we're going to use the shrink wrap modifier to get these to align in the correct positions shift a add mesh plane and let's scale that plane we want to make sure that it encompasses everywhere that we are going to have geometry that hits it it's pretty good and what i like to do with these planes is first make sure that they're named something appropriate so we can say bounce bottom disable the rendering and i also like to change the visualization of them so if we go to the object properties viewport display and change display as from textured to wire so now we just see a wire let's go now to our stair object which i'm going to rename stair click on the modifier properties and let's start adding shrink wrap modifiers so add shrink wrap we want to change the wrap method to project along the z both in the negative and positive directions our target should be bounce bottom now you see the whole thing shrink wrapped so instead of the whole thing we just want our vertex group which is called bottom and check it out we got it lined up except our radii got messed up luckily we can move our modifiers around so if we click and hold and put this after the array and now you see that the bevel works nicely again why is that happening because first let's turn these off so what are we doing first we're arraying then we're shrink wrapping then we're adding the depth and we're doing the bevel so the bevel is done on something that it considers fixed geometry and now if we move this around you see that it kind of acts appropriately in fact we can reverse this completely we can put these to go up if we like to for now i'm going to leave these at zero something like that and our first step should be we know that's half a meter which is too much so first let's add minus 0.5 meter plus 0.27 so that's first landing is 270 millimeters away from that so now we're going to do the same thing for the top so shift d to duplicate z and let's put it at four meters or rather we can do 4.5 meters let's call this object bounce top select our stairs i'm going to duplicate the shrink wrap so it stays in the same place and copies most of the settings that we have already set so click on this arrow here and duplicate or you can see the hotkey here shift d so let's expand this and we want to change the target from bounce bottom to bounce top and we want to change the vertex group from bottom to top so now that's aligning itself nicely as well we're going to do something similar for the second flight of stairs here so let's duplicate this bounce top shift d z and let's call it bounce second flight i'm going to go to a side view so the first thing we want to do is kind of align this angle to the angle of our steps so it's something around this so about 32 degrees next we're going to change that angle to make it negative so minus 32 degrees so it goes in the opposite direction and if we move that somewhere over here now if we go to our steps let's duplicate this shrink wrap modifier again i'm going to contract this expand it so everything is already set up change the target from bounce top to bounce second flight oh look at that it's already looking kind of cool because some of these well actually this angle here is aligning to that plane but that's because of the vertex group it's the wrong vertex group so uncheck top and ch check second flight and as you can see now it only works on our second flight and because we're doing our bevel all the way at the end the bevels always look nice the radii the fillets they always look quite nice you might be wondering why we did this with a screw modifier the reason is that we want the extrusion to be level if we have a shrink wrap of geometry that's extruded in fact let me demonstrate that to you so if you go here that's our base and we extrude that to 0.25 is the value that we're using look what happens all of these are not steps anymore but instead they're completely wrapping themselves around the shrink wrap modifier to that plane and we don't want that because you can't walk on these kinds of steps so i'm going to undo that and expand the screw modifier so the screw modifier 
acts essentially as a extrude but it's parametric because first we modify all of our base geometry the way that we want to and then we extrude it in the direction that we want to have pretty straightforward and plain well not plain but pretty um standardized steps you know they have to be horizontal okay so the next bit is to create a landing in order to do that let's adjust our array we want to have one section that's more or less flat so that might require a slight tweaking of the plane to make it look as flat as possible so i'm going to go to a side view and that looks pretty good you can see how everything adjusts quite nicely when we move the bounce second flight plane around so how do we move that second element so we're going to use a hook modifier to do that first we need to make sure that only these vertices here get adjusted so that's the probably the most tricky part of the whole exercise so for that we will add a couple more modifiers so let's compact all of these so we want to add a vertex weight proximity modifier let's also duplicate this plane so shift d i'm going to press escape to leave it where it is and let's say this is landing bounds landing change the x angle to 90 degrees that's completely at 90 degrees next we want to put this more or less where this stair ends so somewhere over here so now what do we want to affect? We want to affect the landing group. So the landing vertex group actually has all the geometry inside of it as part of that vertex group. But that's okay. That's just our starting point. We can modify that. So we want to change the lowest to something like 1 meter and highest to something like 0.1 meter. And let's select bounce landing as our proximity mode object. Now, if you go to weight paint, you can't really see what's going on because for some reason, not all the modifiers get picked up in weight paint mode, like screw doesn't get picked up. So the only way to test how this is working properly is to do the whole rig and then test it out. So I'm going to put the cursor here, shift right click by putting the cursor there and then shift a let's add an empty go back to the stair object add a hook and the object is going to be empty and the vertex group is going to be landing so now if this is working correctly we should be able to move our empty and that landing should get expanded if it is not then we have an issue with our vertex weight so all we need to do is adjust these parameters here to get to the correct location so now it's really about testing and finding the right one and i see my issue here is the proximity mode that should be changed from object to geometry so now we should hopefully have this work let's go back to linear and yes you can see that it works correctly uh, so what we need to do now is just isolate the last number of vertices in order for make to make this work so we want to click on face and we want to make the lowest really really low because we know that we have our plane quite close to where that element ends so 0.1 meter seems to work quite well so now if you notice if we move this around we get our item to align that's great let's move these two new modifiers that we added before bevel so we have bevel as the last item in the stack and it does the nicest job of it next let's add a solidify modifier and i've noticed in my tests before that some items get flipped and we can check that if we have a really large element and actually now they're working pretty nice in case they are flipping though we could say the offset to be zero so instead of offsetting completely in the positive or the negative direction it's doing a little bit of both so the thickness should be around let's say four centimeters 0 0.04 now i'm noticing a couple of things here so we don't have a nice bevel the reason for that is if we go into the bevel modifier the angle limit method should be less so let's try 10 and now we have a really nice and smooth angle so the last thing then that we want to do is perhaps add another bevel to have not sharp corners but smoother corners so let's add bevel we'll make the amount really small so something like one centimeter or even five millimeters and then change the number of segments to something quite small then to see the effect we can always go to wire mode just to see what's happening in fact let's go to here and enable enable wireframe cool so now we have everything working exactly as we should all of this is again completely parametric the only thing we need to edit is if we go in here and let's say we want to make this a bit wider we can do that if you want to move our plane we can do that as well we can make some interesting effects you can even use this for other design objects not just for stairs 
or if we want to increase the width we can also change it so let's make it 1.2 meters so i'm going to move this minus 0.2 meters and this element here to 0.2 meters now we've got a pretty nice stair happening and of course the bevel could also be adjusted so let's make it something more generous like 0.2 that's much smoother and perhaps lastly how about we move some of these vertices around so they're not completely vertical let's move them 0.3 meters in this direction and also this vertex here 0.3 meters so now if we just move our planes you can see how the whole thing starts to respond in fact we can have both of these just using one plane which is the top plane and also aligned so you can imagine really easily we can do something like we know that angle is about 32 degrees so if we move that down we can have something that looks like this and then the top one if we want to we can do the same thing at a 32 degree angle probably want to do it in the opposite direction minus 32 minus 32 yes here we are so what if we mirror this you see we can get something quite interesting quite quickly and if we flip it upside down it could start to become some kind of massing that's what's nice about these kinds of uh, parametric elements is that we can have a multiple number of options. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or anything else that's quite parametric that you would like to see in regards to architecture and design with Blender. And see you next time.